conquer through rest. Please turn with me to Exodus chapter 3, uh, verses 7 and 8. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt and have heard their cry because of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. So I have come down to deliver them out of the land, out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up from that land to go to a good and large land, to a land flowing with milk and honey, to the place of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites and the Perizzites, the Hivites and the Jebusites. So here we read two passages where God is speaking to his people while they were in hard labor in Egypt. They were under taskmasters, hard labor. And God says, I'm going to take you out of Egypt. I'm going to take you into your promised land. The promised land that God had for his people in the Old Testament is a type, it's a prefiguring, it's a foreshadowing, it's a pointer to the promises that God has made available to you and me, the provisions that God has made available to you and me through the cross of Jesus Christ. That is our promised land as New Testament believers. But not only is the promised land a place of blessing, it's also a place of battles. It's a land flowing with milk and honey, but it's also got enemies that are stronger and bigger than you are, but God will help you conquer them. Now, rest. What's he talking about? He explains it to us. The rest he's talking to us is a place where we enter into the works that God has completed for us. So rest equals faith and obedience. And in that place of rest, doesn't mean you won't have battles. You'll have battles. Doesn't mean you don't have things to conquer. You have to. But you engage from this place of rest. You fight your battles from this place of rest. You do your conquests from this place of rest. You're in a place of faith and obedience. So that you can enjoy the milk and honey. The provisions that God has already made for you and me in Christ. So how do we apply it? Let's look at some scenarios. For example, the first scenario is contending for success in life. Take them to Deuteronomy 28 verse 12, where God said, I will bless you in all the work of your hands. In Joshua 1, 8, he said, if you will meditate in my word and you keep my word, you will make your way prosperous and you will have good success. Does that verse apply to a few of God's people or all of God's people? Let me hear you. Oh, think about another scenario. This is again a very common one. I just picked a few. Think about a real estate problem. Do Christians have real estate problems? Of course. Psalm 103. Verse 6, the Lord executes righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. So God, this situation, these people are oppressing me. These people are illegally, unlawfully violating something. And you're the God who said, "You, my benefit is you will execute righteousness and justice for me. Think about another scenario. A healing for our bodies. What did God say in His Word? And these are just a few scriptures. There are many scriptures. Exodus 23, 25. He said, You will serve the Lord your God. He will bless your bread and your water. And I will take sickness away from your midst. God is the sickness taker away, not the sickness giver. Two quick scenarios. I know we're, we're, we're close to the end, but think about family contending for your family what did god say in his word and again these are just a few scriptures you'll find many proverbs 3:33, the second part of that verse he blesses the habitation of the just that's the king james version but to put it in modern terms he blesses the house of the righteous proverbs 12 7 second part of that verse the house of the righteous will stand it's not talking about building 
her house, the family. The house of the righteous will stand. Last one, for financial sufficiency. What are you going to do with it? Philippians 4.19, Paul is writing, and there are many scriptures, we're just giving a few. He's writing to the believers in Philippi, he says, My God will supply all your needs. He's not just simply saying something to make it look good. He's speaking God's word. My God will supply all your need according to his riches in glory through Jesus Christ. I want to close with this thought. In Romans the 16th chapter, verses, uh, verse 20, the implication is this. You keep yourself in a place of peace and the God of peace will crush Satan underneath your feet.